Hello friends, welcome you all in this session. In previous session we discussed project selection techniques like linear programming, we have also seen integer programming. Let us look at couple of other multi criteria decision making techniques which are av available for project selection. When I say multi criteria it means you need to select a project uh, after considering several criteria. For example, uh, a criterion may be a qualitative one or may be a quantitative one. Uh, to give you an example, let us say if you want to select a vendor and let us say there are 4 vendors available. Vendor A is ready to give you material at, at less price, but uh, does not deliver material in time. On the other hand, vendor B delivers material in time, but charges more money. On the other hand, let us say if you got vendor C, he is ready to give you more credit period but charges very high for the raw materials and D he does not give you credit period but charges less money. So, so there are 4 vendors and there are several criteria now which vendor is to be selected. So, a situation like this can be handled using MCDM uh, techniques and there are several MCDM techniques, we will look at couple of those techniques. Uh, a very prominent technique is multi attribute utility theory, then you have got AHP, it is called analytic hierarchy process, we will see this technique in detail. We have got fuzzy set theory, we have got case based reasoning, uh, there is something called DEA, data envelopment analysis you got smart, it is called simple multi attribute rating technique, you got goal programming, we will see goal programming in detail apart from AHP. There is something called electro method, it is elimination choice translating reality. You have got Promethe, the ninth MCDM technique, it is preference ranking organization method for enrichment evaluation. You got simple additive weighting and the last one is topsis. We will also see this technique in detail, it's, it's, uh, it, it stands for technique for order preference by similarity to, similarity to ideal solution. So, this is topsis. So, we will look at couple of these techniques. Let us first look at goal programming. Uh, it, is, uh, it is extension of linear programming. In linear programming what we have done? Uh, we converted the problem into linear programming model and then we solved it using graphical method for the example which we had taken. Uh, in goal pro programming what happens, uh, you have got several goals, in LP you had only one goal, there was one objective, but in goal pro programming you have got multiple objectives. And in real life situation, if you look at organizations do have multiple objectives. Uh, for example, uh, they want to use their resources in efficient manner, but uh, they also do not want um, too many inputs to be used. Uh, for example, uh, let us say uh, they want to minimize waste, they also want to maximize profit. So, organizations want multiple objectives which are conflict in nature, which are opposite to each other, those objectives to be optimal, my, uh, optimized. So, uh, as I said in LP, you got only one objective, but in goal programming or GP, you have got multiple objectives. So, what happens in goal programming, uh, management will give different priorities to different goals. For example, profit is to be earned this much, but at the same time we want to have these many units of product x1 or product x2. So, you can have 3 goals right? and management will give priorities to these goals. In GP, uh, the objective is always to minimize deviation from the target. 
So, whatever is the target we always try to, uh, to minimize the deviation. Let us say if the objective is to uh, maximize profit, so of course, we would not like to maximize profit, uh, sorry we would not like to minimize profit, but we want to uh, minimize deviation if profit is not achieved. Let us say if profit is not achieved by 100 rupees, so we will try to minimize that 100 rupees value. So, let us look at this example, we will take the, we will continue with the same example which we did using LP. So, you got two products, mobiles and laptops, you have got profit per unit of mobile 120 rupees, profit per unit of laptop 90 rupees. Uh, these two process, these two products go through two processes, assembly and finishing, you have got 90 hours of assembly and you have got 72 hours of finishing, uh, 6 hours are needed by 1 unit of mobile in assembly process. Similarly, 6 units of or 6 hours are needed to make 1 laptop in finishing process. So, this is your pro, um, problem and uh, we, we want to determine the best combination of mobile and laptops to realize a profit of 2100. Now, here the goal is what? We want a minimum profit of 2100. In earlier case, when we solved this example using LP, what was our objective? Can you recall? In previous case, our objective was to maximize total profit, but here we want profit of rupees 2100. So, let us look at how to formulate this problem. This is a this is a single profit, single goal problem, and the prof, uh, goal is to achieve a profit of rupees two one double zero. So, in 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 goal programming, we will have some more variables. For example, in linear programming technique, uh, there were only two variables x one and x two. So, x one was number of units of mobiles, and x two was number of units of laptops. So, apart from those two variables, we will add few more variables here and let us call them as du and do. When I say du, it is, it is the amount by which profit goal is underachieved and do is amount by which profit goal is overachieved. So, there are only three possibilities in this question, either you will achieve a profit of rupees 2100 or you will not achieve it or you will achieve more than it. So, under achievement and over achievement uh, have been expressed by these two variables du and do. And in goal programming as I said in previous slide, we always try to minimize deviations from the target and our target is what? to earn a profit of rupees 2100, right. So, let us look at how to formulate a model. So, minimize z is equal to du, which is under achievement of the profit goal. If, if, if we are over achieving profit, that is more than welcome, right. It is good thing for the organization, but if we are achieving profit goal, then that, uh, then by by what amount you have underachieved that profit goal, that is to be minimized, and which is du in this case, right? So minimize du subject to constraint is 120 x1. The 120 is the profit per unit of mobile plus 90 x2. 90 is profit per unit of laptop plus du minus do is equal to 2100. So, if your profit is let us say, let us say profit is 2200 instead of 2100, it means you have over achieved profit by 900 rupees. So, that under achieved then that under achieved value is to be subtracted from remaining 3 variables here, right. If you have under achieved profit let us say by 100 rupees, 
and if you, if your total profit is let us say 2000 rupees, it means you have under achieved by 100 rupees. So, that is to be aided in this equation in left hand side. So, this is your constraint on profit. These two constraints will remain as it is. These are uh, capacity constraints. You have got 6 x 1 plus 3 x 2 less than or equal to 90, 3 x 1 plus 6 x 2 less than or equal to 72. Now, uh, of course, these variables are uh, not uh, are not negative. So, you have got one non-negativity constraint x 1, x 2, d u and d o all have to be equal to or greater than 0. Now, when you convert uh, this problem, these two especially these two constraints into standard form, then you need to add uh, slack variables here. right? So, here s 1 and s 2 are known as slack variables. A slack variable is a variable which we add to make this inequality constraint into equation form. So, this left hand side is less than right hand side. So, we have added something in left hand side, right. So, this is 6 x 1 plus 3 x 2 plus s 1 is equal to 90, then 3 x 1 plus 6 x 2 plus s 2 is equal to 72. Now, this is a problem which we would be solving using simplex method. Uh, this is extension of uh, graphical method uh, when the number of variables are um, um, let us say even if the you have got two variables you can apply simplex method, but when number of variables uh, uh, increase uh, the complexity in graphical method increases. So, it is good to use simplex method. So, we will have solution by simplex method and I am directly giving you solution by simplex method. So, this is your uh, model and this table is giving you optimum solution. So, if you look at this particular table, then you have got uh, let us say this is basis, basis, uh, basis means uh, these are basic variables. So, the variables under basis column are known as basic variables. Uh, this B column, uh, these are the values of basic variables. Here, uh, this is your uh, decision variable x1, decision variable x2, s1 and s2 are slack variables which we have added to convert inequalities into equations and then you have got d u under achievement of the profit objective and this is d o over achievement of profit objective. So, the so this c j is nothing but and these uh, coefficients of these variables in objective function equation. So, if you look at this objective function equation has got just one variable which is d u and its coefficient is 1 right. So, this 1 we have written all other coefficients are 0. So, you do not have x 1, x 2, s 1, s 1 and s 2. So, you just put them 0 over here right. So, 0, 0 and 0 right. This C b are nothing but the, the, the coefficients of basic variables right. So, this if you look at how to interpret this, this particular table or this solution. So, if you look at x 1 is equal to 12, it means we are making 12 mobiles, x 2 is equal to 6, it means we are making 6 laptops. So, 12 mobiles, 6 laptops would give you how much profit? Can you, can you get the answer to this question? You have got 12 mobiles and 6 laptops profit per mobile is 120. So, 120 into 12 plus 90 into 6, you would get a profit of rupees. You just multiply these two terms. And if you look at this table, this, this is du, du is under achievement of profit, 
which and its value is 120. It means profit goal is under, under achieved by 120 rupees. It means what? How much profit you have actually earned? You earned profit of 1980. So, this value is you can obtain this value by putting uh, these values in your uh, in this equation, right. So, 120 into 12, 90 into 6 plus 120 minus 0, you will get 2 1, uh, you will get uh, uh, you will get 2 1 double 0, if not this then you will get this value, right. So, this is the example on goal programming and the in this case there was only one objective, right. Now, let us look at uh, the ex, uh, let us extend the same problem. If the company sets two equally ranked goals, one to reach a profit of 1500 and the other to meet the mobile goal of 10 units, find the optimum solution. The same problem, the the the, the will the problem is same, right? The same problem, but now the profit goal is is to achieve a profit of one five double zero rupees plus to achieve a mobile goal of ten units, right? So we should produce ten units of mobile phones, and we should have this much profit, right? So how to go ahead with this question? How many variables will be here? In LP, there were two variables in graphical method, right. In, in goal programming, in previous case, there were four variables, right, x1 and x2, du and do, du was for under achievement of profit and do was for over achievement of profit. Here, you will have one more uh, for, for mobile goal, you will have under achievement of mobile goal plus over achievement of mobile goal. So, two more variables. So, total 6, right. So, DUP. So, this is very simple. DU means under achievement of P is profit goal, right. So, amount by which profit goal is under achieved. DOP, amount by which profit goal is over achieved. DUM, under achievement of mobile goal, right? Amount by which mobile goal is under achieved. DOM, amount by which mobile goal is over achieved, right? So, as I said, in goal programming, we always minimize deviation from target, right? So, we will just sum up these two under achievement goals, right? So, DUP plus DUM, right? And what would be our profit constraint? It, it will remain same except just the this particular value. So, 120 x 1 plus 90 x 2 plus under achievement of profit goal minus over achievement of profit goal. So, 1500. Then you have got x 1 which is number of units of mobile phone, right. So, x 1 plus d u m minus d u m is equal to 10 and these two are capacity constraints, right. And this is non-negativity constraint. Okay. So, let us try to solve this question and I will give you direct solution. Here is the solution. So, you have got four basic variables here, right. So, here instead of D O R, this is nothing but mobile phone, right, D O M, right. You can make this correction. So, if you look at here, x 1 is equal to 25 by 2, it means 12.5 and x 1 is what number of units of mobile? We are making 12.5 units of mobile phones. Are uh, Have we achieved our mobile goal? Yes, yes, we have achieved, we have achieved our mobile goal and in fact, we have over achieved it by how many units? This one. Right. This is D O M, right? This is not D O R, this is D O M. So, we have over achieved our mobile goal by 2.5 units. 
if you look at these are select variables let us not discuss these things. So, what we are saying at the end of the day what about profit goal did we achieve profit goal yes or no yes we did achieve our profit goal because uh, under this column under basis column you do not have any under achievement of profit goal value variable right. So, x 1 is equal to 20.25 by 2 x 2 is x 2 x 2 is yeah it is not there it means it is 0. So, profit goal is 1 5 double 0. So, how, how to get this 1 5 double 0? It is 1 1 20 into 22 by 2. So, 60 into 25 which is equal to this. Since both as I said DUP and DOP do not appear in final table it means they are 0. So, this is a case wherein we were having two goals right. Let us look at another multi criteria, multi criteria um, MCDM technique, multi criteria decision making technique. It is called AHP, it was developed by Thomas L. Setti in the year 2000. HP is, is also a structured technique for helping people deal with organization and analyzing complex decisions. In fact, the decisions of organizations are always complex. Why they are complex? Because there are many stakeholders involved. In fact, uh, it is not necessarily that the uh, uh, organizations decisions are complex, but there are several government decisions which are also complex. So, in complex decision making uh, you know when you have got complex situation you need to make decision in fact more more carefully. So, HP is, is a measurement theory that prior, prioritize the hierarchy and consistency of judgment data provided by a group of decision makers. So, what we do generally in HP is we collect data from experts uh, and we collect data on several uh, variables and we will we take their opinion and then after doing necessary calculations uh, we come up with our findings. So, it's, it provides a, a, a comprehensive and rational framework for structuring a problem. We need to structure our problem in HP in different uh, for, uh, levels of format. So, you have got level 0, level 1 and level 2 and so on right. So, in this case we will have several criteria and each criterion can have several sub criteria. So, the first thing which we do in AHP is uh, establish the hierarchy structure, then we have got various hierarchies elements weight computation. Uh, in, in AHP we use uh, a scale called SETI scale. Uh, SETI scale is a 9 point scale and uh, we ask uh, our experts to rate uh, any 2 pair of variables on this 9 point scale and we, we use uh, let us say 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 uh, where 1 is 2 variables are equally preferred, preferred 9 means they are absolutely preferred. Similarly, 3, 5 and 7 and 2, 4, 6 and 8 indicate intermediate values. So, this is uh, nothing but a SETI scale. So, this is how we will be getting our input data. So, you will have a matrix like this. Then uh, we also ch check uh, uh, something called consistency index and consistency ratio in AHP and then we finally, go for overall hierarchy weight computation. So, this is uh, the, the, the technical details which we will skip and uh, let me tell you an example uh, related to HP. Let us say uh, there is a supply chain and the supply chain performance evaluation of an automobile industry and depends on several criteria. 
So, in other words, what are the factors of uh, uh, what are the factors which affect supply chain of an automobile industry? So, the factors which we have gathered um, are you have got quality, you have got delivery, we have got cost, flexibility, and innovation. So, our ultimate goal is which is level 1 is to measure supply chain performance and these are different criteria through which we are measuring supply chain performance. So, this is hierarchical structure to evaluate the supply chain performance evaluation of automotive industries. This is the initial matrix in which we would be getting data from experts. So, let us say you are you are asking to an expert how do you rate quality and delivery? How do you compare quality and cost? How do you compare quality, flexibility, quality and innovation? So, let us say expert says 3. It means that for that particular expert delivery is 3 times important than quality, but cost and quality are equally preferred. So, the importance given to cost and quality is same. When we ask him to compare flexibility and quality, he says that flexibility is one third time important than quality. It means or in other words quality is three times important than flexibility. When we ask him uh, to compare quality and innovation, he says innovation is nine times more important than quality. Similarly, you can have other pairs also for example, let us say delivery and innovation. So, innovation is six times important than delivery, but flexibility is just one fifth time important than delivery and so on. So, this is how you can compare a matrix like this right. So, this is pairwise comparison matrix of respondents. Now, each now, now let us say if you have collected data from three respondents. So, one fellow said 3 on quality and delivery, the second fellow said 5 and the third fellow said 9. So, what to do in that case? So, there are several ways to write this particular value. So, either go for consensus, you can ask all those 3 experts to come to a, a consensus. If they are coming to a consensus, that would be the best. So, let us say if the, all of them have set it is 3. So, you just write 3. Otherwise, you can uh, go for highest frequency value. Let us say if you take this one. So, first fellow said quality to innovation is 9, second fellow says 5, third fellow says 9. So, frequency is 9 and the highest frequency is 9. So, just write 9 hour here. right? So, I will not go into detail of this particular problem, but uh, you have got uh, let us say in this case there are 16 respondents. So, you have, you have got consistency index and you have got consistency ratio. Now, uh, this is your final table. So, you have got uh, these 5 criteria, these are different weights and these are different ranks. So, we will say that the highest weight is for flexibility. So, we will say flexibility is most important for supply chain performance. Quality is at number 2. So, we will say quality is second most important criterion for performance of supply chain. Similarly, rank 3 delivery, rank 4 cost and rank 5 innovation. So, I will give you one more example related to HP. Let us say if you are selecting for a job. So, you have completed your uh, degree and you are looking for a job. So, what kind of uh, things you would look in a job? So, uh, definitely you would like to have uh, one of the criteria would be salary. right? So, salary 
uh, can be again uh, you can have domestic uh, if it is a domestic company you will have some, some salary structure in international company you will have some other structure in college you will have different structure and so on right. So, salary can be divided into four different sub criteria right. Similarly, flexibility. So, what is the location of the job? What what are the uh, uh, timings? And what what work you are supposed to do? Then you have got opportunity to uh, to 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 grow in that organization. So you have got what are what are the entrepreneurial uh, capabilities you would like to develop in that organization? Yeah, what is the uh, growth as far as salary is concerned? Then you got uh, what is the what is your probability of reaching a top level? So what kind of security you are looking for? Let's say if 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 you are a uh, female female student and if you are looking for a job which where the timing is from let's say uh, 8 p.m. to uh, let's say 4 a.m. in the morning. So would you like to take up that kind of job. So, security what kind of security you want high, medium or low and how reputed that organization is. So, you will look at all these criteria and uh, you divide each of those criteria into sub criteria and then take appropriate decision. I will give you one more example. Let us say if you want to select supplier. So, you can have different criteria like quality, cost, delivery. In quality, you can have two sub criteria, in delivery, you can have again sub criteria. So, you can have different levels, right. So, this is your final objective level 1, level 2, and so on, right. So, this is how you can prepare a hierarchy. So, with this, let me stop here. In this session, we have seen two methods goal programming and AHP. In next session, we will see how to s solve a problem using AHP. Thank you very much.